Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Click PLC Serial Communication Timing. Now many questions come from serial communication using the Click PLC. Most of these questions deal with communication timing when using multiple send and receive instructions. We will show you how to deal with serial communication timing in the Click PLC. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, the links in the description below that will start you at video one. We have links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So receive and send instructions will allow you to send and receive serial data to an external device. Now the communication method that you set up can be ASCII or Modbus. Now ASCII or American Standard Code for Information Interchange can be used to send devices such as a printer. Receiving ASCII can be used for connecting barcode scanners to the PLC. Now the barcode will be read as an ASCII string in the PLC. Modbus Serial Communication, or Modbus RTU, is a standard protocol used in many uh, automation devices. Now we will demonstrate the send and receive instructions by communicating Modbus RTU to a solo temperature controller. Now parameters from the solo process temperature controller will be read using multiple receive instructions and the send instruction will be used multiple times as well to write the set value and limits of the set value entered in the temperature controller. Now the set values will only be changed when required. So again, that re revolves a little around a little more timing. So the first thing we'll do is take a look at um, our hardware and the information that we have there. So if we call up, we have a, um, a click PLC connected RS-485 to our solo process temperature controller and you'll see here um, that we um, have it's just a two wire and that two wire is our RS-485 it's good for 1200 meters or 4000 feet without repeaters and what we'll do is just take a look at the parameters within the solo so here's our communication and then our parameters, if we hit and hold the set value for three seconds, then we can see we have the J-type thermocouple, Celsius, high-low limits, and then we go down to our, um, this display here, tells you that it's on, so this is our communication. Then it's set for RTU communication. We have unit number one. 9600 baud, that's the communication uh, rate back and forth. Eight data bits, even parity, one stop bit, and we're back to the beginning again. So that is our communication standards. If we now look at our click PLC, we'll look at the setup and then we'll go to COM port. And under the COM port, we'll go to port number three. And under that setup, we have node address number one, 9600, even one eight, which is the exact same as what we just saw on our solo. So we know that these two will communicate. Notice that our node address is set for one as well. However, this is the master. So it's the node address is not really being used. So it's the slave device that we really have to pay attention to. We'll just cancel out that one, cancel out that one. And next what we'll do is take a look at what addresses we're going to be reading in the solo. So um, we want our present value, set value, and high and low range, which are consecutive Modbus addresses, 44097 to 44100. Next, what we see is our, um, we're going to read in another one called our proportional integral deriv derivative, our integral offsets as well. So we're going to read these five different parameters in, and they start at uh, Modbus address 44106 to 44110. So that's what we're going to be reading in here. And what you'll see is here's our um, actual program, our click program, and we're calling up our solo uh, communication. We're separating this out into a uh, subroutine in order to um, clear up the program and make it easier to read. So here we go. And the first thing we do is we look at the first scan 
the end of our communication or our reset of our, our system. And these are all on one shots, or meaning it only gets on for one scan. And then we use the receive instruction within the click in order to get the information. And that receive instruction, we have three flags right, and, a, and a error code that comes off of that instruction. The receive flag means that we're receiving data or sending data out. And then we have a success or an error flag. And they're the three ones that we use then to trigger the next um, appropriate signal or instruction. So if we look at the timing of this, this is the timing. So we have a one shot here and the receive automatically goes on after our one shot. Then we have, we transmit and receive while well, that receive is on. And then we have our successor air flag that gets triggered after that receiving goes off. So it's very important to see that timing that we have here. So we only need a one shot to try it. We send it out, get the information back, and then we have our communication. So in here, that's exactly what we're doing. And then on our next rung, what we do is we take those, the communication one receiving, when we're not doing that, and we look for the leading edge of a success or our air flag. So that means that we've done our communication now. We send out our next send. And again, we send out the next one. Again, we use a receive. We're looking at address 404106, and that leading four, it could be a four, which is a, with a five digit that we saw before, we're using a six digit. So the zero just represents that we're still using from the same address location. And number of addresses is five. And again, we set our receiving, our success and error, which we use in order to set our flag that says that we've finished our reading. Next, what we do in our program is we look at the right instruction. So our timing chart for our right looks similar to this one. Again, we do use a one shot and then we look for our, our, our success and error flags on the output side. So in this case here, once our reading is done, we look for our change bit, which is C100. That means that we want to change something. Then we send out our communication three, our receive, our success and error bit flags, error, error code if something comes back to us. Once that's sent out, what we do is we say, okay, our Modbus read is complete. We look at our set change. If it's set change is true, and we're not receiving, we look for our success and error. Then we set our Modbus set set value correct on, and we reset our change set value bit. And if it's not on our change set value, we just do this automatically. So it automatically resets it. So we're not losing any time in between. Then what we do is we then look for our change limits bit. So our change limit bits, again, we're using the send or the write command. We're using two registers, and this is a communication for now. So once we send that out, again, what we do is we look for um, our change bit. If it's there, then we look for our communication flags coming back, and we set our next one saying our, we're finished our limits. Or if we don't have the change bit flag, we automatically set that and reset that uh, change limits bit. And finally, what we do is we have our timers. So at the end of communication, we're going to wait 100 milliseconds. Now, this is just to allow the system then to uh, uh, get the information in. And, and uh, once the information is in, we can um, fire off the next one. So it allows us to change those set bits and stuff like that. So we just got to slow down communication to accommodate for what we're trying to do. Then finally, what we do is if we lose communications altogether, we end up, what we'll do is just uh, stop this and, and try to restart that communication again. And we do this through a couple of timers. We have a, a, two sec a two second timer and then a 50 millisecond pulse that we're using as well. And that is the end of routine. So you see here right now, we are communicating to our unit and we are um, bringing in the values on our controller. So if we take a look now, again, we will um, 
call up our uh, solo parameters here. And you can see here, DS1 to DS9 control all those parameters that we were bringing in. And this is my set value, which is 26.6. .6. And what I can do is I can actually hold on to this unit. And as the temperature increases, you will actually see the, um, the increase in temperature on the screen or on the, the solo as well as the screen. So 26.7 now, and you see it automatically went up. Eight. Then what we can do is set our set point. Right now we have 200 in here. Let's change this to 220 or 22.0. We'll write that in. And now we can set this bit on, which is our change set bit. And when we do, it again puts it into our set value right away. This will also allow me, because of our timing, I can then increase the set value and hit set. It automatically will put that in. So I can change it to different locations without any um, adverse effects. And again, all I have to do is then turn this back on. And what will happen is we can change back to the 220. Then we can change our limits. So let's change our limits to say uh, 100. Remember the decimal place is and zero on this one. And as soon as we hit enter here, we can say we can see our, our limits now change. So if you um, enjoy this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.